What's up, everybody? This is Neil Real. And this is Let's Please God, a ministry designed to help you get right with God. Today is episode 34, and we're talking about how to get anything you want from God. I named it that because that's what prosperity teachers are actually telling people. So we're in a new series called The Church Detox, and we're just going over things that we were taught that weren't, weren't true. Uh, they were half-truths. Or they were lies by omission. So today we're going to talk about faith and how we've been lied to about faith. Last time I mentioned that if you have faith in anything other than God's word, it's a recipe for disappointment and deception. Now, faith is is, is defined as, as complete trust or confidence in something or someone. In relation to God, it's the evidence or proof of what you believe coming later so you don't see it right now you say i believe this i believe in god he's going to do something but you don't see it right then and there but later on as the scriptures teach us in hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 that it it faith in god brings about evidence so that's what faith is you also mention how faith leads to obedience in another uh sermon as well but here's where they lie about faith when they preach on health wealth and prosperity and how to obtain it so they'll teach you, if you believe hard enough, you can have it. You can have whatever you want. So faith becomes this self-generated spiritual force that leads to your prosperity. The problem with this is you end up having faith in faith, basically, because it's about how hard you believe in that in order for it to come to pass. Or you end up having faith in God for something that he didn't promise you. So their proof scripture for this is, a, is in Mark 11, 23 and 24. I'm going to read that for you right now. It says, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he hath said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, What things soever ye desire, will ye pray, believe, and ye receive them, and ye shall have them. So, right there. All you got to do is not doubt in your heart. Believe that the things you want will come to pass. Pray, and it'll come to pass. Believe you already received it. And I've heard this a lot from the Pentecostal charismatic uh, groups. I grew up believing some of this stuff, and nothing came to pass. But it sounds good, but it's out of context. These scriptures, are, these verses, these two verses are out of context. Another one they, they mention is Romans chapter 4, verses 17, where they say, call those things which are not as though they were. So if you have a health condition, start speaking against the health condition, saying that this is not going to be that. I'm going to be healthy. So here's one of those declarations, and I want to speak. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call out the errors in it. Here's one I've seen somebody post on Facebook. It says, I declare breakthroughs are coming in my life. Sudden bursts of God's goodness. Now the trickle. Not a stream, but a flood of God's power, a flood of healing, a flood of wisdom, a flood of favor. I am a breakthrough person and I choose to live breakthrough minded. I am expecting God to overwhelm me with his goodness and amaze me with his presence. This is my declaration. See, this is what happens when you start believing in that you, your, your words and what you are you praying for and your faith and whatever you want. You start making declarations like this and. It's OK to be positive. Like when I get up in the morning, I I declare that, you know, this is the day that Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Because I want to set my day off in the right way. But that's in scripture right here. This declaration about breakthroughs and God's going to overwhelm me with goodness and all this stuff. Yes, it's his desire to be, you know, give his children good. But what if God was about to bring you into a trial? What if this is not his will for your, your life right now, as far as some of this stuff that is concerned, but you're, you're just praying this declaration and expecting it to come to pass. So that's the problem I see with it, a flood of favor. What if you're about to be persecuted? It ain't going to feel like favor. Now, this, the other example is naming and claiming. OK, just because you believe hard enough doesn't mean it's going to come to pass or that you should have what you, you want or what you, you know, you've been praying for. 
some of those things are material things. You know, people praying for cars and houses when they already got a car and a house. They want a bigger and better one. You know, some gadget or some new device that they don't necessarily need, but they're praying to get it. Marriages. Some people are not married. They want to be married. So they're, they're praying and claiming certain people that they see and say, that's going to be my husband or that's going to be my wife. And I've seen this with women. In some cases, men that are already married, you know, I, which is crazy to me that this particular man is going to be her husband and she's claimed him. And, you know, it's just weird stuff that you get into when you, you're taught that you can change your environment based off of what you say and what you pray. And if you believe hard enough, if you put enough faith to it, it's going to this is crazy. So these are a few examples that this belief system that faith is this self-generated spiritual force that leads to whatever you want it to do. You know, it doesn't work. So here's the truth. Now, first of all, when it comes to this whole thing about bringing things into existence, God is the only one who can do that. That scripture in Romans 4, 17, where it says, call those things which are not as though they were. If you look at the whole scripture, just the whole verse in itself, it says, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickened the dead and called it those things which be not as though they were. God does that, not you. Men don't have that power. Now, I, I was told that since we were made in the image of God, we had the same power as God. If God spoke the world into existence, we can do the same thing. We can change our life by speaking it, you know, and, and believing things. And, and, and Not true. Not true. You can change your behavior and your actions in your life can change. But this belief and just having faith without action or having that faith based on the word of God and his promises, it's not going to change anything. Here's the truth about all this. Let's go to James chapter four, verses three. And it says this. This is about people who are praying for things and having faith and, you know, wanting to have something. And I'm praying for God and I'm believing God for this new house, a car or, or this, this spouse or whatever. This is what James says to those people. He says, you ask and receive not because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your lust. In other words, you're praying for selfish reasons. Therefore, God's not going to give you what you want. But you got the preacher up there telling you that, and there's tons of scriptures that say that God wants you to prosper, this, that, and the other. But he'll apply that to you. And then you're sitting up here thinking, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you, all you're praying to God is selfish prayers about what you want, things that you want. And the Bible says God knows your needs. And so, but you can still pray, but it's usually, it gets to a place where you're materialistic and you're self-centered in what you're praying. You're not praying about things that you actually need. It's about stuff you want. It's about stuff that is not necessarily going to benefit the kingdom or sometimes it's based off of envy. Somebody else has it, so you want it. And this is what happens when you, you get into this realm where you think you can change some things. He goes on to say in that scripture about being caught up in the world. And that's why you're praying all these selfish prayers, because you're caught up in the world. He goes on to say, you know, that there's there's envy and there's pride there and that he resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So that's in James chapter four, verses three through six. And I encourage you to read that in your own time. And I'll, and I'll put, put that in the show notes. But um, that's the truth about that. We, we're not going to get what we want because we're praying it in self, but for selfish motives. Here's another scripture, 1 John 5, 14 through 15. It says, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. So here we go right here. It says here we have to pray according to his will. So, so you can't get anything from God unless you pray according to his will. That's what he's saying here. So all these prayers about I want a new car and house, He's saying that it has to be according to his will. So that other scripture where it says in Mark, you can move a mountain, believe those things that you want will come to pass, blah, blah, blah. This has to be in correlation with other scriptures. In other words, the whole counsel of God. And as we see here, all our prayers must be in the, in the will of God in order, order for them to work. So, so, so the remedy to all of this, if you want to get anything from God, you first have to know God's will. And that's found in Romans chapter 12. Those first few verses in Romans 12, you'll see how to how to know God's will. After that, we need to pray God's will. 
So our prayers must, shouldn't be centered on us about, you know, everything we want and, you know, selfish desires, as James brought out. But pray what God's will is and then know what the promises of God are. There's a bunch of promises throughout the Bible that he promised us and said, this is what I'm going to do for you. Pray those promises. Put your faith in those promises and then be patient with God. God will come through. The Bible says in, in Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1, that faith in God reduces evidence. So it's going to come to pass. Now, if there is no evidence, then maybe your faith is misplaced. Okay, that's the thing. We have to really think about some of the stuff that we, we have our faith in and or who we have our faith in. And so I encourage you to look back at what you have in your faith in. Is it faith in faith? You know, are you believing that faith is some spiritual force that you can just if you put enough energy into it, that it will lead to prosperity? Or are you putting your faith in God's word and his promises and are you praying in the will of God and having faith in what he's already said he's going to do in his will? That's the only way to get what you want from God. So next time you hear some preacher talking about, you know, you know, just send me some money now and, and God's going to bless you, this, that, and the other. That's not in the word. We need finance. We ask God. He says he'll take care of all our needs. If we want to be healthy. We pray to God about that. But at the same time, as we talked about in the past, you know, sometimes he leaves us in a condition because it humbles us and keeps us preserved to the end. Sometimes we may not make as much money as we want to make because that's God's will for us at that, at that time. We mentioned examples about, you know, of Jesus. He said he had no place to lay his head. But then we also found in scripture that he had a treasurer. And he had a lot of money in there, according to that. So he had he had times of plenty and then he had times of lack. And, and the same thing with Paul. He said the same thing. He's been content in times of abundance and of times of lack. So it's not the will of God for everybody to be rich and wealthy and all that kind of stuff. Now, I'm not, we're not against it, but if that's the will of God for you, he, you will be rich. You will be wealthy. Same thing with health. We talked about Paul and how God allowed him to have a, an affirmity and he kept praying about it. I mean, God wouldn't move. He said, my grace is sufficient, you know, in your weakness, you're strong. Um, so everything is not the way we want it to be. And you, what a prosperity teacher will say is that you're supposed to have everything the way you want it. And it ain't always that way. And the more you study scripture, you'll see how God really is. And you'll begin to pray prayers that are in his will. And you'll see promises that are clearly written out that you can look at and say, OK, if I follow that, he's going to he's going to do what he says. And one of those is in First John. And I'm going to list the other promises in this uh, under sermon notes. But one is First John one nine. It says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse of us as all of all unrighteousness. That's a promise of God. So we don't never have to feel like, am I right with God? Am I? Am I, am I on his good side? Am I, have I been cleansed of my sins? No. If you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. He is faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. So you'll be forgiven and you'll be cleansed of, that, of the unrighteousness that you committed. That's a promise. And those are the promises we need to focus on so that we will know where we're at with God. So that's all I got for today. Till next time, walk in the spirit. If you got any questions, you can email me, illreal at lesspleasegod.com. Uh, thank you for your donations and support. I appreciate them. And till next time, be blessed.